So Lauren, thanks for joining us. What made you get into art? Great question. Um, I've always been kind of a creative mind, but I would say um, just dabbled in it. Did a lot of drawing in high school, kind of as a way to kind of express myself in ways I didn't know how to use words for, if that makes sense. Uh, it wasn't until a traumatic brain injury about, I think, six years ago now um, that I really started to spend like nonstop time making art, especially of sports. I actually got hit with a baseball in the head and it broke my I had like 10 surgeries, it was a bit of a disaster, um, but lost the ability to kind of focus on numbers and all the things that I was doing prior to that. But I did find that I could focus on art and like that gave me my happiness back, trying to like finding something you can focus on again when you've kind of lost your brain a little bit in a way um, was really important to me and it kind of pulled me out of a dark space. And so it's all I did. I just go home and do art. It's all I really understood. And it was the most difficult time in my life, but what came out of it was probably the most amazing gift of being able to do this for a living. Like, he told me when I was younger I was gonna be a baseball sports artist and meet some of my favorite people. Like, I probably would have laughed at you. So it's, it's, uh, it's, been a, it's been kind of a weird road, but it's been special. My inspirations when I started getting into art would be just what I liked. If I'm on, my only C in college was an art class. Like, I can't name half the stuff I do when I go in the art store, I'm like, can I have one of those doohickeys with the thingamajigs? Like, I don't know what anything is. I just kind of create what I feel like looks good. And then it's just kind of been a, like a constant evolution where I started with just pencil drawings. That's all I did. And then I moved on to, I wanted to create on wood because I feel like wood's its own type of, you know, art with the wood grain. And it's also an integral part of baseball, like all the old stadiums, wood bats, things like that. So, um, Inspirations to me are people that like just know the grind of being an artist and that there's so many peaks and valleys and a lot of valleys and you have to kind of be more of a business person sometimes than an artist. People that have found a way to do that without hating art, if that makes sense. So um, Chuck Stiles is someone I, I'm very inspired by. Uh, Dick Perez, I would say, um, someone who's been doing it for a long time. I don't know him personally, so, uh, but just anyone that's found a way to sustain it and not let the commercial part take over the passion part. Art to me means another way to tell a story. So I would say one of the hardest things, I went through a lot of mental health after my head injury and even before that. And my biggest holdup was I didn't know how to talk about how I felt. So one of my, I'd say most powerful pieces for me personally was um, a piece I did kind of describing what a concussion felt like. Because I was one of those people that didn't think a concussion was gonna last, I thought it was a mindset which was so naive and so stupid. And then I think maybe, I don't know if it was karma or something that I got one, but suddenly I was like, oh no. Um, so trying to describe that in a way where I couldn't find words, that's what art means to me. It's like a voice that I've never been able to find in words, I can show it. And the other part is there's a bit of safety in it, in a sense that someone else can look at it and maybe find something within it and use it as their voice. But also I'm not directly telling you what you need to see. So there's a bit of safety in it. So it allowed me to slowly get into a place where I felt more and more comfortable advocating for the things that are important to me, like mental health, head injuries, um, just using your voice and being okay with not being a perfect human. So when it comes to sports, I like being able to tell a story with one image. So I want different people to see different things, but at the end of the day, the biggest fan and the brand new fan both will get something out of it. So that's kind of what art is to me. Top 70, working with anyone, especially when I'm delivering to um, athletes or celebrities that I've admired that 10 years ago, you know, you don't think you're gonna meet these people, right? Um, for me, the special part is the part before the art. So trying to look beyond what everybody else sees on a screen and dig a little bit deeper. So look into those interviews that not everybody's watching. Uh, read those you know, articles where they get a little bit deeper. Um, Apple Music, Zane does this, always does these really great interviews with musicians where they kind of get a little bit deeper. So trying to find like little, egg, little, little Easter eggs about people that aren't as well known and then putting that in the art that says, hey, like, I, I'm, I'm, I see you as a, more than you're putting out there. I don't just see you as an athlete that I expect to hit four home runs and three at bats. And if you don't, I'm mad at you. Cause I feel like that's kind of the, the world of sports. It's very polarizing. So getting to meet people, you just realize that they're just humans and they don't like failing either. And they, um, they're unique and they, not all of them are, are, you know, 
perfect. So getting to do an art piece where I, I try and let them know that I see the bigger part of them, if I can achieve that, like that's my favorite thing. I can't always do it. Sometimes I, I don't quite get it right, but that's been the most special part of meeting people is, is getting a chance to do more than just be like, here's another photo of you playing art or playing art, playing, playing sports. Here's a piece of art that I hope lets you know that I see, I see you as a person too. I'm still trying to figure out what I do, but I call it mixed media. That's the safest description, because it's like, what is it? It's like, well, pick it, anything you want, under that umbrella. Um, but yeah, mixed media. So I do a digital stencil on tissue paper. Again, I don't know really how I came up with this. It was like a lot of times just chilling in my apartment, talking to my dogs about how we're going to do this, you know? Head injuries are, you know what? I did that before, head injury. But um, this, this, what happens with the tissue paper is it allows Kind of, kind of like when you get a tattoo, they kind of put a, um, like a stencil down and they pull it away. The tissue paper, I pull some of the fibers back out, but that glue lip stays on there, which keeps the ink from going up the grain. Because it's really hard to do. You put any ink, it just immediately absorbs up the grain. So once I kind of figured out that that could work, then that's when I started incorporating more ink on top as well as paint on top. And then sandpaper, varnish, you know, I just found out last week, last week, I've been doing this for, there's a little sandpaper pen, like it's like a little pen. So instead of like folding a piece of sandpaper in a minute and like, there's like a thing for it. Cause again, I don't know what I'm doing when I go to the art store. I'm like, do you have one of these things? And finally I saw one, I was like, oh my God, where was that a long time ago? But so yeah, I'm always trying to figure out better ways to do things, new ways to do things. Mixed media is the best I can describe it as.